world through these eyes. We perceive data and it all functions on a particular mechanism. The rays of light from outside comes and hits the eye. We can see things because light is reflected from that object. So if I keep this eraser here and if this room had no light whatsoever, would you be able to see this? No. So why do you see anything? Because rays of light hit this and it reflects into your eyes. Can you see what's behind this? No, because the rays of light are not hitting your eyes. So we see things because rays of light hits the eye and eye is such an amazing instrument. The human eye can see things from zero to infinity. We can see the stars and the moons. That's the distance of perseverance. That's what we can see over here. It's an amazing, amazing instrument. The human eye is the window to the world. Have you ever imagined what your life would be without the human eye? So we're going to do the human eye. And before I get into the explanation of the human eye, I'm going to first share with you how to draw a human eye if this question comes for two marks. So you take a compass, you take a pencil, and I first want you to draw a circle of three centimeters. And a light circle, don't make it too dark to begin with. And then I want you to draw another circle, a concentric circle for 3.2 centimeters, right? So pehla apne banaya three centimeters, then you make it for 3.2 and then make it for 3.5. And then you make another third circle around it, which is 3.5 centimeters. So you make these three concentric circles. After that, I want you to erase the samne ka hissa. Erase this part. And uh, after you erase that part, I want you to draw a lens over there. You know, this is your lens. You can draw this lens. And uh, below this lens, you're going to do something like this. And above this lens, you're going to do something like this. Connect this part to the second circle. Connect this part to the second circle. You know, there are two circles that you will have, right? Connect this to the second circle. The first circle meets over here. The first circle meets and dies over here, right? So you have the circle, the first and the second circle. And, you know, you can just shade this region, the, this region, the region between 3.0 and 3.2. That's the reg region you can just shade. Uh, make it two centimeters thick, right? That's how it is. You can just make this and it dies over here. Clear that? Okay. Now, um, this part will go into the iris. Nice, thin and a little wavery. Okay. I take it ahead. This way. I double this. I double this. And from here I get it out. And from here I get it out. Uh, I get this to the second, the third layer and I connect it. I get it to the third layer and I connect it. Cool. Now, I erase this part a little so that I give way for the optic nerve to get in. And the optic nerve, I'll just show many lines like this. A little more organic lines. Shade somewhere in between just to give that kind of value. Um, put this dotted over here. Let the region between 3.2 and 3.5 be dotted. So that gives the depth and the volume to it right now the optic nerve comes from here from here and it gets connected to this part here that's how it is so this is the ciliary muscles and this is the ciliary muscles the ciliary muscles is important and it helps the eye to for better vision it goes up and it comes down now this part is the part where the optic fiber and the optic nerve comes on the retina so if the rays of light hits this region then there is no image formed on the brain and this is called as a blind spot. Now the human eye has a thin membrane called as the cornea. So this is the cornea and it's a very thin membrane which is ahead of the human eye. This is your cornea. Now the light enters the human eye through this cornea. This is the place from where light enters the cornea. And maximum refraction of rays of light that enters over here takes place at the cornea. Behind the cornea is a dark muscular diaphragm. This is your dark muscular diaphragm and that's called as the iris. So this is your iris. This is your cornea. Now the color of iris is different for different people. 
the color of iris is different for different people so if you look at some people they have this nice cute blue eyes and some of them would have these green eyes and brown most of them would be black so that's iris this iris has a small opening there's a small opening over here with variable diameter this opening keeps changing and from here what you see of this lens this part of the lens what you see is called as the pupil so what is pupil pupil is that part of the lens which is exposed through this little di little diameter opening from the iris the pupil is useful to control and regulate the amount of light that is entering the eye the pupil contracts if there is too much of light while the pupil dilates when there is insufficient light i hope this is clear to you right the tendency of this pupil to to dilate as well as to expand to dilate and to adjust itself is called as adaptation the pupil is capable of adapting itself based on the light which is opening up so this iris it opens and closes if there is less light it opens up so that there is more light to enter and if there is less if there is more light it closes up that's what the iris does this cornea of the human eye it forms a transparent bulge on the surface of the eyeball it forms a transparent bulge on the on the surface of this eyeball this eyeball is something spherical in shape with a diameter of approximately 2.3 centimeters okay now there is a transparent biconvex crystalline body which is located behind the pupil and that is called as a lens so this is the transparent biconvex so there's a convex side here and a convex side here it's biconvex and it's located exactly behind the pupil you see pupil is this part which you see and this is your lens the whole thing is called as your lens the crystalline lens provides fine adjustment of the focal length and that's autofocus you keep something here also you can read you keep something here also you can read you keep something infinity at the start position also you can see that is because the focal length of this lens this lens is capable of adjusting its focal length and um, that's how it helps you see the real inverted image which is which is formed on the retina this is your retina and from here there are millions of nerve fibers which goes which goes inside the optical nerve and it goes right inside your brain memory the retina is an extremely light sensitive screen it is delicate membrane extremely extremely delicate membrane it consists of large number of light sensitive cells you know there are these cone shaped cells and there are these rod shaped cells these cells are found over here and these are sensitive to to light the cone shaped cells are sensitive to the color and the rod shaped cells are sensitive to the light intensity these cells are activated upon illumination the moment there is light these cells gets activated they generate electric signals that's how these cells work that's how the retina is set up these signals are passed by the optic nerve and it goes to the brain the brain then interprets these signals into something what you already know then the brain interprets these signals and also processes the information in such a way that we perceive and we understand what we see the focal length of a human eye is about 2.5 centimeters so if this is the lens then for you to just understand that this is the lens how much is the focus the focus is 2.5 this is the normal focus 2.5 that's the focal length of a human eye this focal length of the eye lens decreases while viewing nearer objects and the lens becomes thicker uh, this gives a sharp image of the nearby object on the retina this ability of the lens to adjust its focal length is called as power of accommodation that's what we just spoke sometime back right what is power of accommodation you take a piece of you take a piece of paper or a pen or something and keep it uh, keep it at this distance can you see it yeah keep it at this distance can you see it yeah you keep it furthermore away from you can you see it still yes that is because the human eye lens is constantly adjusting its focal length in order to accommodate every image that you are seeing so that it could form a clear inverted image on the retina this itself adjustment of this focal length is called as power of accommodation the human eye can see everything which i keep at what distance 
if i keep something here can i see no right if i keep something inside this can i see no there is a particular point from which i can see without strain on my head my eye and everything what is that minimum distance where i should keep so that i can see everything clearly that minimum distance is called as distance of distinct to vision and for a normal human eye it is 25 cm remember we told that the focal length is 2.5 so the so the focal length is 25 from 25 to where can i keep i can keep till infinity i can see the stars i can see the moon what an instrument this is right from the minimum distance of distinct vision is called that is is 25 cm talk about the human eye okay now you must understand that the human eye is the most valuable and the sensitive cell it's a very natural optical instrument. It is nearly spherical in shape. It's got a slight bulge. And because of the eye lens and the eyeball and the human eye, we can see the world outside. Let's discuss about the important parts of the eye and its functions. Let's begin with the cornea. The front part of the eye is covered with this, with this membrane and it's called as the cornea. Light enters the eye through the cornea, iris. Just behind the cornea is that dark muscular diaphragm, which has a small circular opening. That's the pupil. So pupil is that small circular opening in the iris. The pupil appears black because it cannot reflect light. Every light is absorbed inside. It goes inside straight from there to the retina. The pupil decides and determines kitna light enters inside the eye. It changes sizes to accommodate the amount of light that is available. Now the iris regulates the light by adjusting the size of the pupil. The iris regulates and controls the light. Now, when the intensity of light is more, or if it's an extra bright source, then the iris contracts the pupil. And as a result, the amount of light entering the eye decreases. Then when the intensity of light is less, or if it's dim, then the eyelid, iris dilates the pupil so that more light can enter the human eye. The eye lens is this part it's a double convex lens yeah it's filled with a proteinous material inside it's double convex like you see that's the, that's the behind convex part that's the position where it is held and it is held by the ciliary muscles you know the ciliary muscles helps in changing the curvature and the focal length of the eye lens. Then comes the retina. The retina is that back part. That's where the image is formed, the real and inverted image. It's very light sensitive and it's having the rod cells and the cone cells. It's like the screen of a camera. Light sensitive cells are there. When light falls on these receptors, it sends electrical signals to the brain through the optic nerve. The space between the retina and the eye lens is filled with this, this fluid called as vitreous humor. Now there's a blind spot on the retina. You know what's a blind spot? If a ray of light falls there, the brain cannot see anything. That is because the optic nerve comes there. So this is the human eye and this is the lens and normally the rays of light comes from infinity and uh, they will hit the retina here. When it hits it here, you perfectly get to see a perfect vision because from here the optic nerve takes the information to the brain. Now in some cases, the eyeball bulges or elongates in some cases. So this is the lens. Now the rays of light which comes in, the rays of light which comes in sometimes converges the image here or sometimes the rays of light which comes in from infinity converges it here 
इन दोनों ही केस में द इमेज इज नॉट फॉर्म्ड ऑन द रेटिना वेन द इमेज इज नॉट फॉर्म्ड ऑन द रेटिना द ऑप्टिक नर्व डज नॉट कैरी इट इफेक्टिवली दिस इज गॉन बी अ ब्लर इमेज फॉर्म्ड एंड दिस इज गॉन बी अ ब्लर इमेज फॉर्म्ड दिस इज अ defect of the human eye this is a defect of the human eye and there are two different defects of the human eye this defect is called as the hypermetropia and this is called as the myopia what happens in a myopia and what happens in a hypermetropia in a myopia the person can see nearby things and cannot see dur ka exactly the opposite happens in hypermetropia is bande ko paas ka nahi dikhta hai aur dur ka dikhta hai yahan par image kaha banta hai the image is formed in front of the retina matlab he will get to see something blur yahan par image kaha bana retina ke piche bana matlab again this person can see something blur ye aisa hota kyu hai this happens so because of two reasons first of all the ciliary muscles the ciliary muscles remember the ciliary muscles i told you these muscles do not relax properly and the eyeball gets elongated the eyeball gets elongated than the normal size which is why it converges here why does this happen again the ciliary muscles becomes weaker and uh, the eyeball gets flattened so can this be corrected oh yes it can be corrected how do you correct this you correct this by keeping the right amount of lens the right amount of optic lens so in this case we correct it by using a concave lens in this case we connect correct it by using a convex lens what does these lens do so the rays of light which now comes what does a concave lens do the concave lens will what does it do converge or diverge the concave lens will diverge so the rays of light will come and it diverges it the rays of light will come and it diverges it right now from here it will converge from here it will converge when you draw it with a scale or barabar aata hai okay so concave lens will first diverge and then the human eye which has a convex lens will converge yahan par kya ho gaya it is first going to converge it is first going to converge and then again converge why again converge because double convex lens it is going to converge and converge so which concave lens will we use we'll use a concave lens of suitable focal length we'll use a convex lens of a suitable con uh, focal length what is the job of this concave lens the convergence is here and i want the convergence here so what will i do i will first have to diverge it a little before it converges What will I have to do here? यहाँ पर original convergence यहाँ आया है और मुझे ये अंदर चाहिए मतलब I wanted to converge inside, so I will want it to converge from a shorter position. So myopia and hypermetropia are two defects of the human eye, and they will come one of the two either for distinction or for diagram or for give reason. You should be really be in a position to know the answers for these. The third defect that we're going to have in the syllabus is called as presbyopia. Presbyopia is an old age locher. It's an old age defect. As we age through life, the ciliary muscles eventually becomes weaker. Definitely becomes weaker. It's the case of any muscles, right? Your face, your skin, your any muscle becomes weaker. It's it becomes loose. It loosens up. It it loses the ability to hold and to grip and and to do everything what it normally does. Um, As you age, नजदीक का चीज देखने में प्रॉब्लम होता है दूर का चीज देखने में प्रॉब्लम होता है बिकॉज द सीलरी मसल्स डोंट फंक्शन दैट इफेक्टिवली एंड दैट क्विकली दैट्स कॉल एज प्रेस बायोपिया द सीलरी मसल्स एट दिस पॉइंट इन टाइम एट ओल्ड एज लूज इट्स एबिलिटी टू ऑटो एट जस्ट द फोकल लेंथ ऑफ द ह्यूमन आई and because of the ciliary muscles becoming weak and inefficient incapable at that point in time to adjust the focal length that effectively some people sometimes suffer from both myopia and hypermetropia so how do you correct this how do you rectify this defect not by using one lens but by using both bifocal convex and concave both the lenses dur ka dekhne ke liye the concave lens works and nazdeek ka dekhne ke liye the convex lens works you know for distinct vision for distance vision uh, we use a concave lens and for nearby vision clarity 
uh, to correct that disorder, that defect, we use convex lens. And this is the latest 21st century. We use surgery, we use laser, we use contact lenses. We use a lot more than just external lenses. So good luck. This is a very important topic. Myopia. The light from the distant objects that gets converged at a point in front of the retina. This is a defect and this defect is called as nearsightedness or myopia. Let's observe this. And then you can understand the concept of myopia. In the case of a normal eye, the light rays falls exactly at the retina. In the case of myopic eye, the light rays comes from the object, it falls ahead. So definitely the image formed is very blurred for the brain to understand. A correction. To compensate this, we put in a concave lens between the eye and the object. So you see it diverges first and then the net focus on the retina. So let's look at hypermetropia. The eye lens, the incoming light comes here and then the image is formed behind the retina. This is called as farsightedness or the hypermetropia. Let's observe these cases. So in a normal eye, the light rays is gonna come straight and it's gonna meet here. But in the case of a hypermetropic eye, what happens is the light rays comes like this and it falls and it's focused behind. So how do you correct it now? You correct it by keeping a convergent lens. So it happens there in this particular way.